Hi, welcome to this week's video. My name is Paul. So this week um, I wasn't as busy with the writing, so I had more free time to do a bit of painting. Uh, this is one of the paintings. Just in case anybody sort of stumbled across this video or maybe YouTube has recommended it. You know the way the YouTube algorithm sometimes recommends things and it's not always clear why it's recommending it. But Anyway, if you've just stumbled across this and you've never seen any of my other videos, um, welcome to the channel. And I do mostly watercolour landscape paintings. And they usually follow the same sort of pattern. So the first thing I do is soak the paper. I just use a little spray bottle and soak it with water. Mainly because I like to do wet and wet sort of skies. So I like the paper to be soaked before I start putting any paint on. The bottom half of the paper, I will use some tissue paper to dry that off later on. And then other things like flicking water onto the, the surface of the painting, it just creates um, abstract patterns and things in the on the surface of the, the paper. And you can see it on the right hand side, you get these sort of splash marks where when the water droplets hit the paper, they push the pigment away. Um, as long as the pigment is still sort of settling in the paper. So you get those marks appearing. A lot of watercolor tutorials and things will spend a lot of time telling you how to avoid those sort of things. Um, I'm different in the sense that I actively go looking for those sorts of things. It's just, there's no, um, there's no one way to do art. Um, it's not, it's not like mathematics where, you know, five plus five always equals 10. Art is pretty much anything goes. At least that's, uh, the way I look at art. I know it's not the way everybody does. Um, and I have been watching a few videos on YouTube and over the last few weeks, there seems to be sort of almost like two ways of thinking about this. It's maybe a bit of a simplification, but sort of two broad ways of looking at it. On the one hand, you have my sort of way of looking at it where anyone can be an artist. Uh, you don't have to have a qualification. You don't have to have a piece of paper from a college to prove that you're bona fide. You don't have to be recognized by um, some gatekeeper, some expert who says that you are an artist. I believe that anybody is an artist. In fact, everybody is an artist. It's like Picasso said, we're all children, I'm paraphrasing because I can't remember the exact quote, but all children are artists. Um, the trick is when you grow up, can you still remain an artist? And that's sort of the way um, I look at art and doing art. And I know it's not the way everybody does. There are a lot of people out there who say that you should study, um, you should gain skills and knowledge. You should be recognized as an artist. And only then you sort of call yourself an artist. And there are pros and cons, I think, with um, both sort of ways of looking at it. I think the way I look at it, is it opens a, up art to everybody. Um, whether you're 10 years old or 100 years old, it doesn't matter. Um, anybody can be an artist, not just painting, but sculpture and other things as well. The, the one drawback of that sort of way of thinking is inevitably, and you see this in history, not just anybody can be an artist, but also then anything can be art. And there's the famous case of, um, was he a French artist? I forget, Duchamp, I think his name is. I may be mispronouncing that. He famously entered a piece of artwork in an exhibition. And when I say piece of artwork, what I mean was he got a ceramic urinal. He signed it with a name that wasn't his name and the date, I think it was 1917 or something. And he entered this into a competition or a, an exhibition. 
he didn't make it or anything, he just went out and bought it. Another famous example was an English artist. Um, her name is Tracy Emin, I think. And one of her artworks was an unmade bed. Well, every morning I wake up, I'm faced with an unmade bed. So I don't know, does that make me an artist? Is my unmade bed a piece of art? Who decides which unmade bed is art and which unmade bed is just an unmade bed? And that's the sort of problem that this approach can lead to, I think. Everyone's an artist and everything is art. And is that true or I don't know. I don't know the answer to it, um, but I just prefer this way of thinking that art should be for everybody and not just a, an elite few. The other approach then is that not everybody is an artist and to become an artist you have to study and you have to practice and it's a craft that you have to perfect. And they look at art in a more traditional sort of way. And there is um, good points and bad points about that way of thinking as well. So on the good side, it is true that you sort of have to learn some skills. Creativity by itself is maybe not enough, especially if you want to get into more sort of representational painting. You do need some sort of knowledge and skills. On the downside, that sort of approach is somewhat elitist. It excludes people a little bit. And it can even in extreme cases lead to, for example, the Nazis, the German Nazi party had what they called degenerate art. They made a decision, a political decision, that this art is acceptable and that art is not acceptable. And primarily the art they considered acceptable was more traditional in nature. So I'm not saying that those people who have that opinion are Nazis. I'm not saying that at all. But it is a danger that if you go down that road, you start to put labels on things. This is acceptable and that is not acceptable. And it's a bit of a, a dystopian art world that you create. Then. Okay, well, this is the scan of the final painting, um, sort of summer field bright colors. So a bit of an abstraction in the sky where I flick the water on, things like that. I like all of those patterns that you can get um, with watercolor. Okay, if you'd like to subscribe, just click on the big red button below and hopefully see you in next week's video.